my name is Laura Hudson. I studied environmental art in Glasgow and then um, a postgraduate in film and I currently work in drawing and painting. For me, painting is a way of trying to make sense of the world that I see is quite kind of confusing. My name is Beth Luella. I'm an artist. Um, I have um, created images just about all my life. From when I was old enough to hold a crayon, I was drawing and haven't, haven't stopped. So it's a very big part of my life and the way that I communicate. My name is Chisara. I'm an emerging artist and I've grown up in London. When I think about being an artist, think about freedom. It's really the joy of being able to make connections between everything and anything that I want to and draw a language out of that and share ideas that way. My name is Ritu Sood. I think I was always a very sensitive and observant child and always deeply creative. I think I've always been a maker, so whether it's food or painting or making something with wood or crafts I was always making. I'm Hannah. I'm an artist with a master's in fine art illustration. It wasn't a choice to become an artist. It feels innate. My name's Omar Majid and I'm an artist. I always felt the sense of difference growing up in an army town and I've suffered mental health problems since I was in my mid-teens. Well I'm Jen Doy. I was born in Scotland and after I retired I became an artist. I actually recently published a little book explaining how I became an artist in 1950s Scotland. My name is Violet Francis Kreitau and originally I come from Austria but I've moved here when I was 19 uh, where I then studied art. I get my inspiration from my humanity where it feels like you know, to live now inside this body, in this place. I almost feel like creating images is it's like my voice um, and images and art are very powerful. You can communicate so many things in a, in a very short space of time. Um, that's something I hear back quite a lot from my artwork is the um, like emotional impact the artwork's had on people um, and the way it's made them felt. And that is a massive motivator for me. Looking back, I think the ancient philosophies and creativity in India are deeply embedded in my work. I attended four art schools in the UK and in Spain, but I think my greatest teachers have been artists that have come before me, such as Vermeer, Van Gogh, Indian miniature painting, Ganga School, Hiroshige, uh, so many incredible artists and my guru will always be John Berger. We're such a kind of blink of an eye in the universe and, and we don't we understand so little of what's out there and for me that's quite an interesting thing to explore and a lot of my work has a lot of space in it and I think that's partly to do with wanting pe the viewer to bring their own um, stories and understanding of the world that we all share. My inspiration comes from the identity issues of disability and invisible illness. My work spans time and records the change in perspective of someone slowly emerging back into the world of normal after surviving a traumatic brain injury. The first thing that I get inspiration from is the natural world and that's always what draws me to my practice. I tend to start going out into the woods, going into gardens, and the reason I do that is because there's an energy and a life force that I'm just completely addicted to. And what I most want to communicate to others is that when we stop and look at things that we might pass by, that there's so much joy and beauty there that we can really connect to and that helps us to understand ourselves better as people. I think like the concept I want to uh, communicate is that uh, there is treasure in, in the wreckage of life, that that's kind of you know, from with all these fragments that, that make up our lives, that's where the kind of important things can be found. Well, I suppose I'm motivated by looking at things that have been marginalised from history and bringing them into a sort of confrontation with the present. History doesn't just stay in the past, it influences what happens now.
like I was always making things and creating things. Inspiration comes from all around, just the everyday, and I try and look at things humorously sometimes, particularly my video art. I have a sense that creating art gives life meaning and gives me a sense of identity. Soon as I saw um, the competition advertised, I wanted to apply for it because I totally related to the theme of being different. I think also because my artwork often focuses on people and our, what connects us, what connects humanity, um, I'm very sort of aware of differences and celebrating diversity um, and, and also those things that we have in, in common. The image I submitted to the bookmark is a self-portrait I painted um, during our first lockdown year and it is a very sort of personal response to the lockdown and um, it also celebrates me and who I am so my Native American heritage is celebrated in this. I think what really drew me to this competition was thinking about the idea of difference because difference is something that causes so much conflict in the world and yet it's also a source of beauty and a source of change because it's what makes us unique and it's what provides the, all the art, the music, the culture that we enjoy. The image that I submitted came from really reflecting on how I feel different as a person and what that really was was when I was growing up I was mixed race and I didn't really fit into one box of nationality or culture so I had to look everywhere and draw on everything around me in order to find who I was as a person. The image I've submitted for the bookmark shows me as the figure who is both hiding and also left out. The painting, it's a fragment of a painting, which because the painting is so huge, it's four and a half metres, I was quite happy for a fragment because the whole piece is about the fragmentation of, of society and um, the disparate um, way that we're being forced apart as people. The image I've submitted, it's looking at the fundamental unity of, of humankind. Well, I submitted a work called Mare Nostrum, which is Latin for Our Sea. And it uses the myth of Ulysses and the sirens. Sirens and mermaids lure men to their doom. Mare. She's almost fetal-like, and hence the title contained, but there's also a calm, contemplative emotion of a desire to thrive. And I wanted to bring that image of a duality of a moment to this project because I think it's something that people will resonate with, that despite all all that life throws at you, there is always an inner calm, there's always something, a resilience that we can bring to the situation that will help us through. The image I submitted is a still from a video I made about my, my daughter's disability and there's like a toy, a mechanical toy dinosaur. He's trying, you know, with his weirdness and awkwardness, he's, uh, he's still trying to get on with his life and trying to fit in. While I was at art school, I suffered a traumatic and total collapse. I was 20 years old and my life stopped pretty much for a long period of time and I experienced pain, isolation, dependence in a way that I had never experienced them before. Um, I think that period of my life deepened my understanding that human suffering um, is for sharing. And that human experience is for sharing and needs to be shared and it strengthened what I what I was doing in my painting. In fact, looking back, I think my creative voice was formed after that period of time. I started to embrace my differences and celebrate them and and see them as well say as, as a, you know as a good thing. It's what, what makes me me, makes us us. I have Asperger's, so the way that I see the world is overwhelming, so I don't have any filters of any kind, so it's really difficult, and I find making art as a, as a way of trying to sort of either understand or reconcile or process those anxieties. People do fear what they see as the other. In reality, we're all different, but at the same time, we're all one. 
Um, one way I feel different is um, by having a disabled daughter. But what I've learned is that, um, or what I'm still learning, I think, is that I can't, I can't listen to what, what other people tell me how it's supposed to be. I have to look at my own life and just kind of work from there and do what's best for us or for, for myself instead of, you know, looking at norms and what people are supposed to be doing. You know, we should, we should be more accepting of difference and it's actually a great thing. I couldn't read until I was eight. The day that I learnt to read, I just had this insatiable desire to, to read everything because I was just so, it was like a, a window had been opened. So for me, books are incredibly important. I guess they're the first things to get taken away because they are a source of knowledge. The books that were burnt were considered to be un-German, subversive tomes, threatening an ideology that worshipped superiority and perfection. And my brain injuries changed me. I'm now viewed as disabled. I'm no longer perfect. I've got a blue badge that proclaims my inferiority. I'm seen as unnormal and modern society claims to be inclusive and non-discriminating. But just like the student groups in 1933 who carried out the public burning of the books, there's still an intolerance of people who are perceived as different. When I think about the Nazi burning of books, I really think about the destruction of ideas. In particular, when I think of myself, it's not long in historical terms that women and people who are from ethnic minorities have had the chance to share their ideas and their voice. So it's really important that we keep reflecting on ideas about keeping it open, keeping a dialogue and not shutting down on ideas. Education and the seeking of knowledge is the best tool we have for empowering ourselves and defending ourselves against ignorance and against cruelty and intolerance. I was quite interested in this burning books idea. It's the destruction of culture, people's heritage. It's not just bits of paper that are being burned, it's what these books symbolise. It's a sort of matter of who's persecuted, who's accepted, who's not welcome.